Hundreds of thousands of Israeli reservists were drafted into the military in the wake of the October 7th Hamas attack, and many of them have since fought, killed, and been killed in Gaza over the past nine months. Israel requires every Israeli citizen over the age of 18 who is Jewish, Druze, or Circassian to serve in the Israeli military, while Palestinian citizens of Israel are exempt from compulsory military service, as were Orthodox Jewish religious students until last month when an Israeli high court ruling said they could be drafted too. Now, in Israel, there are not many refuseniks, or people who refuse to serve in the military, which makes Tal Mitnik really stand out. Tal is an 18-year-old Israeli who last December refused his mandatory draft to join the military in protest at Israel's killing of civilians in Gaza, making him the first conscientious objector since October the 7th. Tal was sentenced to 30 days in prison and was sent back to prison four more times after that, spending more than 185 days in prison over the course of this war. And Tal joins me now. Uh, Tal, thank you so much for coming on the show. What made you take this pretty bold step of refusing to serve in the Israeli military, which landed you in prison multiple times? Thanks for having me on. Uh, what made me take this step is uh, realizing that I come from a privileged point where I live from. I live in Jewish Israeli society. I'm from uh, Tel Aviv, which is a which is a city. And I I feel like I have, um, I need to speak out against the injustices that I see before me uh, because uh, this war is not going to be harming me. Um, it's, I mean, it's going to be harming all of Israeli society and it's going to be harming mostly Palestinian society in Gaza and in the West Bank. So I felt like I needed to take the stance and I needed to talk, about, talk out against this war so that for the betterment of our society and for Palestinian society. And I have to ask, Tal, what was it like being in prison for 185 days on and off at the age of just 18? Astonishing. It's not an easy experience being so far away from friends and family uh, and being in this kind of isolation where everything I know um, is just not there anymore. Uh, but uh, I put it into proportion and I know that I have a lot of support uh, outside um, and it was a sacrifice that I was willing to take uh, to show this voice inside Israeli society. Tal, you've been an activist against this war. You were previously an activist with Youth Against Dictatorship, protesting against uh, Netanyahu's uh, judicial changes. How did you become an activist in Israel at such a young age? I think it was the realization that uh, Israel is such a small country and the protests that started against the Netanyahu judicial reforms were really close to my house. And I would go out to them and see members of Knesset, important people on the left, on the right. Everyone was just so close to me. And I think that I realized that as a young person, uh, we can make this change and we have the power to change. And Tal, just on Palestine, I have to ask, do you remember, you're 18 years old, I know you've been doing this for a couple of years protesting. Do you remember the first time you heard the word occupation and began to understand what it is that your country is doing to Palestinians in the occupied West Bank and Gaza? It really came from inside the house. My, my dad was a journalist and he covered these uh, subjects going to interview uh, Israeli politicians and Palestinian politicians. And we talked about the subject of occupation inside the house. Uh, but I think I really only realized kind of how big it is and how consequential it is uh, when I started reading and researching uh, by myself on the internet. Tal, how have friends and family reacted to your decision within Israel to be the first conscientious objector to this war, to refuse to serve in your country's military? Have you lost friends over it? As I've said, I'm, I'm very privileged uh, to live in a place in Israel where it is fairly acceptable to not join the military. Um, by no means is it acceptable to refuse this publicly and talk about the occupation and out against this war. Uh, but the people, my friends that I've had in high school that aren't necessarily even anything close to my political beliefs, uh, they have stayed my friends because they, they know who I am. They know what my beliefs are. They know that I'm not pro-violence or pro-killing Israeli civilians or even Israeli soldiers. Uh, I believe that the way forward uh, is peace and the only way is to stop this war, to bring back these hostages uh, and to work towards a more uh, long-lasting solution in this area. 
And you just mentioned some high school friends of yours and what they think of you. Am I right in saying, Tal, that in Israel, unlike a lot of other countries these days, young people are more right-wing than their parents, not more left-wing than their parents, that Israel is in many ways uh, going in a different direction to a lot of Western democracies, and that someone like yourself is a bit of an aberration amongst your generation? Yes, you would be right, sadly. Uh, the young generation is more radical is more right-wing, is more likely to sympathize with uh, nationalistic ideas. Uh, but I, I'm still, we're not losing hope. Um, I know that uh, the solution is going to come, and people are going to have to adapt to the solution. The reality that Palestinians live here, the reality that Israeli Jews live here, and there's no other way of uh, going about it. You're not going to be able to kick out 7 million Palestinians. You're not going to be able to murder all of them. And you're not going to be able to kick out all 7 million Jews. And I think that people are going to start realizing that and it's going to, it's going to be better. And when you see Israeli soldiers on TikTok filming themselves, destroying Palestinian homes, laughing as they do it, dancing, uh, putting on Palestinian women's underwear, clothing after they've been dispossessed in Gaza, stealing their kids' toys, some of the grotesque stuff that we've seen online... A, how does that make you feel as someone who is supposed to be serving alongside these people in Gaza? And B, what do you think should happen to those people? It's, it's, uh, these are terrible scenes that we're seeing on social media. And I think they really reflect the uh, dehumanization uh, that has uh, come across Israeli society, especially uh, after October 7th. I think that after October 7th, everything became legitimate, uh, calling, uh, calling Palestinians animals and putting them under humans. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's terrible, but I think the way that we go forward from this um, is um, a peaceful solution. I, 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 don't, I don't think that we should put all Israeli soldiers in prison. Um, I think that the way that we move forward is societal change. And the way that we create societal change is by showing people that another way is possible. I think that these people are not these, the soldiers that we see on uh, social media are not these like characteristically evil people that no matter where they were born, they would be evil. I think that we can, that people can change. Well said. Uh, Tao, you and Sophia Orr, another young Israeli conscientious objector to this war, uh, you both wrote a letter to Joe Biden back in May from prison. And in it, you say Joe Biden's unconditional support for Israel is risking our future, the future of Israelis, and that it's brought our society to the normalization of carnage. It's a pretty strong condemnation of Biden's support for Israel. Uh, he's, of course, dropping out of the race for re-election. Do you think Vice President Kamala Harris can do, will do a better job on this issue? What do you hope she'll do? What's your message to her? I think that anyone that claims to be a friend of Israel, like Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or any of the Democrats or Republicans claim to be, I think anyone that claims to be a friend of Israel or friend of Palestine should stop arming this war, should stop inviting Netanyahu and his colleagues uh, to to come to the U.S. as a, as a friend. They don't realize that Netanyahu has been the one creating this war, creating this violence, stopping the hostages from coming back. I think it's a disgrace to invite a war criminal to speak in the United States Congress. Last it's not only... Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say, you're right, it is a disgrace. Uh, last question. You are a super brave, in my view, and very inspiring young man. Where does your personal bravery come from? What inspires... What drives Tal Mitnick? I know that this is I know that this is the right thing, and I know that we need to speak out. Um, and I know that I might not have uh, hu huge support inside Israel, but I know that I have my circle, and especially the uh, Misalvot network, which is a network of conscientious objectors that support themselves. And I know that I will be able to help the next conscientious objector. Um, and the next conscientious director will be able to help the next one. And this way we create a community and that's, that's the way that we'll move forward. Tal Mitnick, we will have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us today, but thank you also for taking the stand that you've taken. We appreciate you. Thank you.